Until you win, millionaire, there's always Network Q, number one for used cars. Have a look at this. this is question number 11. It is worth £64,000. You have no lifelines, but you might as well play it. Here it comes. What is added to gin or vodka to make a classic gimlet cocktail? Lime juice, champagne, ginger ale, bitters. Drink a lot? Not a lot, but I drink a few. Have a few drinks, yes. Um, so you drink a lot? Uh, not unless she's under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Just being nosy, really. Yeah, £32,000 guaranteed, yeah. but you might as well play this. It's worth £64,000. Take as long as you need. What is added to gin or vodka to make a classic gimlet cocktail? Lime juice, champagne, ginger ale, bitters. Right. Well, I'm really not sure about this one, Chris but I think it's bitters. I'm going to go with bitters. Why? Uh, because bitters is... I have... I know you add bitters to drinks, um, as you do lime juice, obviously, but I don't think it's ginger ale or champagne. Lime juice or bitters are the two that I'm considering, and bitters is the one I think I'm going to go for. <laughs> I Top can't few. really explain it any better than that. But bitters... Final answer. Final answer, Chris, thank you. I'll tell your wife, Sue up there, thinks the answer is champagne. You had £32,000. You still have £32,000. I'm sorry, the answer is lime juice. Lime. And when you were juggling the two, yeah, you went for the wrong yeah, one. Well, but have a look. That's what you go home with. Not a bad night. terrific. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Enjoy it. Give him a big hand. Thank Steve you goes much. back to the Isle of Wight with £32,000. Well played. Now we have ten brand new contestants. We're very, very keen to follow him into the hot seat. Let's meet them tonight. They are Nick Coombs from North Yorkshire, <laughs> Mick Dolan from Cheshire, Matthew Doverson from Essex, Steve Jenkins from Cheshire, Alan Stork from Nottinghamshire, Paul Taylor from Greater Manchester, Rob Savage from Hampshire, John Pepiad from Buckinghamshire. Mark Pampney from Buckinghamshire. And James Smith from South Lanarkshire. Well, looking a bit serious tonight, but it's serious money. Here we go then. Time for that opening ten to play fastest finger first. Remember, there are four answers, only one correct order. First to find it from our ten in the fastest time will be next to play for one million pounds. It can be done. It has been done. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience so they can concentrate. Here comes the first question. Put these feature films about planes in the order they were first released. <laughs> Memphis Bell, the Dam Busters, Airport 633 Squadron. <laughs> Looking very tense tonight. Let's see, this is the right order. Um, Dam Busters, fairly obviously the farthest one back in time. Uh, release 54, 1954. 633 Squadron, 1964. Uh, Airport, 1970. Great film. Uh, Memphis Bell, 1990. So that's the right order. Now, 10 star. Did 10 get it right? I suspect not. Let's have a look. Only one, Steve Jenkins, in 6.06 .06 seconds. The play, Steve, you were the only one got it right. Off right, mate. Right, you want to play for a million pounds? Oh. Right, here we have Steve Jenkins, a credit controller from Hyde in Cheshire. Uh, his wife, Carol, is up in the audience, and they have two kids, Christopher and Rebecca, who's now 13, but was only a little girl. When this snap was taken of one of the most important people in her daddy's life, 
Yes, that's soccer legend Dennis Law. Oh, and little Rebecca, of course, is, is the other one. Now, as you might have guessed, Steve is a huge fan of Manchester United, but it says he now gets more enjoyment watching his nine-year-old little son, Christopher, playing football than watching Man U. Right, at this moment, Steve is just 15 questions away. It sounds so easy when you say it. 15 questions away from £1 million. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? All right, we've been up with the dizzy heights of question number 11. We're back down to number one. Let's try and race you back up. Question number one is for £100. Here it is. Complete this phrase, meaning to act promptly at a good opportunity. Strike while the iron is... dot, 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 question mark. Flat. Hot. Cold. Faulty. That's hot, Chris. It's hot, you've got £100. <laughs> Question number two is for 200. Which of these is both a type of bullet and a creature found in the garden? Rug, mug, slug, thug. I was getting worried then. Um, slug. You have 200 pounds. <laughs> Try and race you up to at least 1,000 pounds. This is question number three. Which of these describes a group of people united or bound by strong relationships? Close knit, close crochet, close embroider, close sew. Close knit, Chris. No problem at all, you got three hundred quid. <laughs> this is question number four, it's for five hundred quid. Which of these creatures is famous for walking sideways? Crow. Crane fly, crab, crocodile. That's crab, Chris. Yeah, five hundred pounds. <laughs> right, question number five. We guarantee you going back to the wife and kids. Well, the wife's here, but you know, go back with the wife to the kids. Uh, at least a thousand pounds better off. Here it comes, Steve. Lots of luck. Have a look. At school, quadratic equations are most likely to be taught in which subject? Physical education, biology, geography, mathematics. That's mathematics, Chris. It's the right answer, you have £1,000. <laughs> Feel better? Feel better now. What about, um, what about she who must be obeyed? She wants a new boiler. A new boiler? <laughs> <laughs> I want a new boiler as well. I'm not going to get into this. This is quite good, actually, because Rebecca, who's <clears throat> 13, yeah. said lots of luck to Daddy, and um, if Daddy wins a lot of money tonight, Rebecca, who's 13, would like a Saab convertible. <laughs> Christopher, who's nine, said also good luck, Daddy, because he wants a brand new Ferrari. <laughs> well, you can get it, can't you? You just have to wait a long time before you can actually drive it anywhere. OK, well, let's, uh, you have £1,000, which is good. Uh, you are ten away from a million. You have all three lifelines untouched. This is question number six. David Letterman is famous for performing what role on American TV? Talk show host, sportsman, stuntman, newsreader. He's a talk show host, Chris. Never seen him? <clears throat> yeah. Any good? Nearly as good as you. Oh, you're such a toady. <laughs> Final answer? Yeah. It's the right answer. You have £2,000. <laughs> right, you have £2,000. You are four away from 32000 But you are nine away from a million. You have three lifelines. Have a look. Question number seven. Flemish is most closely related to which European language? Dutch, Portuguese, Finnish, Italian. I think I'll ask the audience, Chris. OK, right, <laughs> audience, uh, on your keypads, please, the first lifeline that Steve's actually needed. Have a look at this, this is the question, it's worth £4,000. Flemish is most closely related to which European language? Now, A on your keypads will be Dutch, B will be Portuguese, C is Finnish, D is Italian. One of those is worth £4,000. All vote now. Uh, 
Um, big old margin, actually, 77%, so Dutch. 2% Italian, 15% Finnish, 6% Portuguese. It's your call, but it's, um, it's a big percentage. <clears throat> yeah, go for Dutch. Final answer? Final answer. I can tell your wife, uh, Carol, thinks it's Finnish. It must be Dutch, then. <laughs> <laughs> you know her so well. It's the right answer. You have £4,000. It is Dutch. <laughs> OK. You have £4,000. You still have a 50-50. Uh, you can still phone a friend. Question number eight is for £8,000. Here it comes. Which centre in Buckinghamshire is part of the English Institute of Sport? Bisham Abbey, Claydon House, Chicherley Hall, Waddesdon Manor. I'm thinking um, Bisham Abbey. Want to play? Not heard of the other three. They'll play Bishop Abbey. Final answer. Final answer. You've just won £8,000. <laughs> you have £8,000. Uh, you are two away from £32,000. Have a look, see what comes out for question number nine. It's worth £16,000. Who provides the voice of Bruce, a great white shark, in the 2003 Disney film Finding Nemo? Mark Little, Paul Hogan, Jason Donovan, Barry Humphreys. I've seen the film recently. <coughs> um... Hear the voice? I think Mel, was Mel Gibson in it? I'm not sure. He's not there, though, is he? It's no good. <laughs> no, it won't be Mel Gibson. No. <laughs> Quite confident it's not two of them. <clears throat> Which two are you confident that it's not? I don't think it's Jason Donovan, and I don't think it's Barry Humphreys. I just don't think they're in it. I think Paul Hogan, I'm just worried about Mark Little. Um, I'll go 50 50, Chris. OK, computer take away two random wrong answers leads to the right answer <coughs> and the one remaining wrong answer. What are you thinking? Well, I did say Paul Hogan, but I'm not sure now. <clears throat> he just seems to be the sort that they'd ask to do a voice in a film rather than Barry Humphreys. One of those was £16,000. One of them will cost you £7,000. Uh, you have a phone friend. Phone Paul. Paul? <clears throat> well, Paul Hogan, ask him if he was in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul who? Paul Smith. Oh, where's, where's he? He's near me in okay. um, Cheshire. All right, we'll phone Paul. Um, tell him the question. Two possible answers. If you're not happy or he's not that convincing, <clears throat> you don't have to take his answer. You can still walk away with £8,000. Yeah. Hi, yeah, it's Chris Tarrant here. Good evening. Hi, yeah, Chris. All, all right. right. I'm all right. I'm good. Um, well, you know why I'm ringing. I certainly do, yeah. Well, you know when you said, I'll be your phone a friend to That's Steve? That's right, yeah. Well, this is that moment. He's doing OK, actually. He's got stuck right. uh, on a particular question. It's worth £16,000 to him, if you can give him the right answer. 16000 Yeah. He's now, he? um, he's already used up a 50-50, so there are only two possibilities, which okay. should help. So, Paul, one of these is right and one of them's wrong. Right. Steve, lots of luck. You've got 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Hey, mate. Hiya. 
Who provides the voice of Bruce, a great white shark, in the Disney film Finding Nemo? Paul Hogan or Barry Humphreys? Um, I don't know, James. You don't? No. I, I, if we'll guess, I'm going to go for Paul Hogan. Well, that's what I said. But um, I don't think it'd be Barry Humphreys, but I'm, it's a <clears> guess. Yeah. Sorry. All right, then. OK, mate. All right, cheers. Hello, bud. See you later. See ya. Bye bye. Jeez, was he? Mm. He's your friend. Yeah. <laughs> Not much use. He did his best. Not much use. What's up, Chief? It's worth £16,000. Um, you're two away from 32000 I go for Paul Hogan. Final answer? Yeah, final answer. That was very decisive all of a sudden. Steve, you had £8,000. I can tell you, your wife Carol thinks the answer is Barry Humphreys. And I can tell you that wife Carol is right. You have just lost £7,000. I am sorry, matey. But he does go away with £1,000. Give him a big hand. <laughs> That's a quiet in the audience. Here comes the next question. Put the most recent leaders of the Conservative Party in chronological order. Ian Duncan Smith, John Major, Michael Howard, William Hague. Right, let's see. Nine contestants left. This is the right order, then, in chronological order. Um, John Major, farthest one back, uh, 1990. Then uh, there was William Hague, uh, through to 97. Then IDS till 2001. And the current one, of course, Michael Howard, who started in 2003. So that's the right order. Now, nine left. How many got it right out of nine? Just the one. Paul Taylor in 4.62 seconds. Well done, Paul. You're the only one who knew it. Want to play for a million quid? Of course you do. Right, here we go again. This is Paul Taylor, a hospital doctor from Didsbury in Greater Manchester. Partner Cathy's up there in the audience, and the kids, Charlotte and George, are watching at home. Paul grew up on a farm in New Zealand, and in addition to being a doctor, he's also a qualified sheep shearer. Now, with a big win, Cathy wants a tour of Europe, and she'd also like a nice ring. And Paul has gone so far as to admit that marriage is under consideration. <laughs> 15 questions, three brand new lifelines, one million pounds. That's the formula, Paul. Lots of luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, question number one for 100 pounds. Here we go. Who would be most likely to carry a truncheon? Police officer, brain surgeon, tax inspector, landscape gardener. Uh, police officer. You have 100 pounds. <laughs> Not too difficult, but they do get a bit harder as the money goes up. Question number two is for 200 quid. Person who acts in a reckless manner is said to throw caution to the what? Sun, wind, snow, rain. Uh, that would be wind, Chris. You have 200 pounds. <laughs> Question number three is for 300 pounds. You have your lifelines, only use them if you have to. Here it comes. In his first miracle, Jesus turned water into what? Milk, bread, wine, cheese. Uh, wine. You have 300 pounds. <laughs> Question number four is for 500. Which of these words means, unfortunately, alibi, alias, alas, Alabaster. Alas. It's the right answer. You have £500. <laughs> no problem so far, Paul. You're racing up. Question number five would guarantee you £1,000. Your lifelines are untouched. Here it is. The TV show Celebrity Squares was based on which game? Noughts and crosses. Drafts. Backgammon. Darts. No, 
thoughts and cross this question. It's the right answer. You have £1,000. <laughs> so marriage is under consideration. I think, uh, what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Is that consideration by you or consideration by Cathy? Uh, I think I used the wrong word. It's, it's a good word. Uh, yes. Uh, it's going to get me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, um, what have you sort of set your sights on, if you're realistic? Um, it's, it's hard to say. I really didn't expect to get up here in the chair. <laughs> so, um, it's, I, I suppose 32,000 is a nice target. That'd be good. Anything above that would be a big massive difference bonus. difference for you two and, and kids? I mean, big difference, 32,000? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it would make a big difference to most people, so... Would marriage be still under consideration? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... You know, would it be I'd... considered more strongly? Yes, I wouldn't be able to um, plead poverty, would I? cathy has gone all unnecessary, trying to hide under the seat. Yes. Right, you have £1,000, that's guaranteed. You are ten away from a million, you have all your lifelines. Question number six is for £2,000. Sartorial is a word that relates specifically to which professional? Interior designer, tailor, chef, hairdresser. Uh, tailor, Chris. Sure. Yes. Final answer. Yes. It's the right answer. You have two thousand pounds. <laughs> okay, you have two thousand pounds. Uh, question number seven is for 4,000. You have all your lifelines untouched. Have a look. In the military, which of these is a term for a place of detention? Brick house, stone house, wood house, glass house. Audience. Okay, audience, let's try and get Paul up to £4,000. First lifeline he's needed so far. Uh, all in the keypads, please, this is the question. In the military, which of these is a term for a place of detention? A is brick house, B is stone house, C is wood house, D is glass house. All vote now. Um... Majority say glass house, not a huge percentage, but 56% against 25 a brick house, 14% uh, stone house, 5% wood house. I'll go with that, Chris. Even though you never heard of it? I think that's a pretty good percentage, so I'll Final trust answer? them. Yes. I'll trust them. You did well to trust them. It's the right answer. You got £4,000. <laughs> And in fact, tonight before you came down, uh, Cathy wanted to stay back and be your phone a friend, didn't she? She, uh, she would be very good, actually. She wouldn't be that good because she thought the last one was Brick House. Okay. <laughs> but this one question out of possible 15. You have £4,000. Question number eight is for 8000 Here it comes. You still have phone a friend, you've still got 50 50. Which of these is not usually considered to be one of the four major golf tournaments? Australian Open, US Masters, British Open. US Open. Your golfer? Um, badly. Badly. <laughs> uh, it's the Australian Open. Not usually considered to be one of the four majors? No. Final answer? Yes. Absolutely right, you've got £8,000. <laughs> US Masters, British Open, US Open, and the other one is the US PGA of the full majors. Right, you have £8,000. You are two away from £32,000. you are hanging in there. You've got two lifelines intact. Question number nine is for £16,000. In the films of The Lord of the Rings, which role is played by Orlando Bloom? Aragorn, Boromir, Gimli, Legolas. Uh, it's Legolas, Chris. Sure? Yes. Seen him? Seen all three? I haven't seen the last one. Um, final answer? 
Yes. You just won sixteen thousand pounds. Question number nine was worth £16,000. Question number ten would guarantee you 32000 if you play it. Have a look at it, tell me what you want to do. Pear David is the name of a species of which animal? Horse, monkey, dog, deer. Which way is your mind thinking? Um, my first instinct is that it's a type of deer, but I'm not certain. You got a 50-50, you can find a friend. Take a 50-50, Chris. Okay, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Lee pulled the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Deer still there uh, and horse. Uh, I better phone a friend. Okay, now who'd know? It's quite a critical question, so who'd know? I'll ask Nick. Nick, okay. Uh, tell Nick the two possibilities. You want to tell him it's worth £32,000? No. No? It's okay. We'll phone Nick, tell him the question, two possible answers. One of those is worth £32,000 to you. Let's see what happens. Hello, Nick Thatcher speaking. Hi, Nick, it's Chris Tarrant. Good evening. Oh, hello. Hiya, how are you? Good evening. <laughs> well, now, you remember when you promised you'd be phone a friend? Yeah. Well, this yeah. is that moment. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, yes. Paul, Paul's a good guy. So well, well, he is a good guy, but I hope he becomes a much richer guy thanks to the next few minutes of uh, his life. Uh, he's, he's doing OK, but he's stuck on one particular question. Now, there are only two answers left. One is right and one is wrong. All right, mate, and he reckons, okay. you, Nick, he reckons you, Nick, will know the answer. Hope so. <laughs> Hope so. All right, mate. Right, Paul, you've got 30 seconds. Uh, two possible answers. Your time starts now. Nick, Pierre David, spelt P-E-R-E, -E, new word David, is the name of a species of which animal? Horse? It's, a, it's a deer. Is it? Oh, OK. You sure on that? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm as sure as I can be. <laughs> OK. Thanks, Nick. Do you want to just tell me what the other one was? A horse or a deer? It's a deer. Wonderful. OK. Thanks, Nick. Good luck, sport. Good luck. Cheers. Bye-bye. He seemed a very, very, very nice man. Well, I hope he was. Yeah. Right, you want to play. If you're wrong, if he's wrong, you lose £15,000. You have £16,000. It's worth 32000 It's the amount of money you said you came for. Yes, I'll play. Final oh, answer. Deer. You've just won £32,000. <laughs> After looking very sombre for the last few minutes, he actually smiled then. God, look at that. That make you smile. Paul, whatever happens tonight, and you've, you've worked hard for that, you go home with at least that amount of money. Want to take it? It's yours. OK. OK? Feel good? Yes. yes. Right, you have £32,000. Paul, you might as well play the next one no matter what. You have no lifelines, but question number 11 is for £64,000. You can't lose on this. That cheque is guaranteed. Here it comes, question number 11 of a possible 15. Here it is. Who was the mother of Richard the Lionheart? Mary of Teck. Anne of Cleves. Caroline of Brunswick. Eleanor of Aquitaine. Now, one of those is worth £64,000. You're guaranteed £32,000. Not Anne of Cleves. Um, I think it's Eleanor of Aquitaine. Why? Just rings a bell, and he 
he spent a lot of his life in, in France, and I think it was in Aquitaine, and she's about the right time. Can I play this? Yes. Oh, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Final answer? Yes. I can't tell you, Cathy, who wanted to be phone a friend, thought the answer was Carolina Brunswick. She's wrong. You're right. You just won sixty-four thousand pounds. Is that one? Shake hands. Who's right? You weren't going to give that check out, were you? <laughs> Listen, you still guaranteed that, whatever. But I can't give the sixty-four and the thirty-two. It doesn't work like that. Otherwise, that would be um, ninety-six. But you have got that one now. Okay. Feel good? Yep. Marriage still under consideration. <laughs> Playing Cupid this evening. Now you have sixty-four thousand. Uh, question number twelve. Now you could drop money here. You have no lifelines left intact. But question number twelve is for one hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. Have a look at it. Question number twelve. Out of a possible fifteen, you are four away from one million. Here it comes. Which of these men was not one of Captain Scott's companions on his final journey to the South Pole? Bowers, Evans, Oates, Richardson. £32,000. Play it. Final answer. You've just won £125,000. <laughs> You're very calm, Paul. You're kind of numb, I think, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. I am okay. Well, let me um, let me show you exactly what you've <coughs> achieved, and you may well not have finished yet. You are going home at the moment with that check for one hundred. You said you wanted thirty-two thousand tonight. You're going home with a check for one hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. But we don't want to give you that. <laughs> you got that if you want it. But question number thirteen would be worth a quarter of a million. If you decided to go for it and give me the right answer. <coughs> Marriage still being considered? It's <laughs> <laughs> no. serious now, isn't it? Right, have a look at question number 13. Paul, you do not have to play this question. You're guaranteed that 32,000 that you said you came for, but if you gave me a wrong answer here, you would lose 93,000 pounds. Quite sobering, okay? But question number 13 is worth £250,000. Have a look, you're three away from a million. Here it comes. The campus of which American university is in Cambridge, Massachusetts? Princeton, Harvard, Yale, Columbia. Sure, it's Harvard. The campus of which American university is in Cambridge, Massachusetts? Princeton, Harvard, Yale, Columbia. 
It's worth £250,000. I'll say Harvard. Final answer. You just won two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. <laughs> you can smile if you like. <laughs> Everyone in the audience is grinning from ear to ear. Paul's going, hmm. <laughs> two hundred and fifty thousand. Fantastic. Marriage? No, never mind. <laughs> Have a look. It's amazing. Very quietly, you've got up to that situation with just two answers between you and one million pounds. You've got that at this moment. 250,000 pounds. Take it. Now, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is better or worse, really. Well, it's better. Um, it's nice. Very, very nice. It's nice. Quarter of a million. It's, it's nice. Bet you never thought this when you were sheep shearing. Um, I won't need to do that again. <laughs> right, you have a quarter of a million. Serious business. You are two away from one million pounds. Question number 14 is worth 500,000. You can obviously walk straight out of here with 250,000 pounds. If you give me a wrong answer to the next question, you're still guaranteed that 32,000, which is what you said you came for, for the, the uh, partner and the kids. But, give me a wrong answer here, you lose 218,000 pounds. Okay? Have a look at question number 14 of a possible 15. Here it is. Which of these German cities is not on the River Rhine? Cologne. Dusseldorf. Hamburg, Koblenz, it's worth half a million. <laughs> it's sort of hysteria setting it. Take your time, have a look at it. One of those is worth £500,000. Which of these German cities is not on the River Rhine? Cologne, Dusseldorf, Hamburg, Koblenz. One of those is worth half a million. The one I, th I think it probably is is Koblenz. It's a huge amount of money. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't be sure enough. I'll take this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very polite. Thank you very much for my quarter of a million. Thank you very much. Final answer. Take the money? Yes. OK, give Paul Taylor a huge <laughs> round of applause. He goes away <laughs> with £250,000. You thought it was Koblenz, and I can tell you that Kathy, she thought it was Hamburg. If you said to me Koblenz, you would have just lost £218,000. If you had left Kathy at home and phoned her, you would have won half a million. Hamburg, Kathy's choice was the right answer. You two go home and sort it out. <laughs> he goes away with £250,000.